All right, so just quickly for those of you that don't know what the JMX8 is, this is the entire system. It's a 12 inch sub, speak on cable, extender pole. That is the mixer, which we will get into shortly. And in the back of the sub casing, you store the top column. You literally just flick that off. And that is eight two inch drivers in there. And inside here, this is the amp 1400 watts. If you are running a second system, you will just use that link output. And in the app, you will select stereo. But you can definitely run this on its own. It is plenty loud. I'm going to quickly set this up and we'll get straight into the app. Just so that you guys know, everything that I'm going to show you on the app can be done on the mixer itself. So if you ever forget your tablet or your iPad at home, you can still use the system by pressing a combination of buttons. If I go home here, let's just quickly look at channel 1. I've got a microphone plugged in here. And if I select that channel by pressing input, I can see the different parameters and I can scroll through these parameters by hitting right or left and let's say I want to add more effects I turn it up and you can physically see it going up and down but the app is connected and just to show you how they work in unison if I physically turn up channel 1 here I don't know if you can see that but the app is going up and down in real time as well. But let's get into the app then. So you've got to download the RCF Evox app. It's available for Android and on the R Store for Apple. Obviously I'm using Android. You open the app and I want to connect it so you can get an idea of how long it takes to set up. So you open the app. Um, we're going to go now connect it. There it is already in my last seen Bluetooth devices, click connecting. Now it says connected for media and audio. So basically what that means is if I play music from my iPad now, um, it's going to come through channel seven and eight, which is the Bluetooth channel. Um, and I would be able to turn it up and listen to the music streaming via Bluetooth. Uh, this is the homepage of the app. Uh, basically, channel 1, 2, 3 and 4 are XLR jack combos. Channel 5 and 6 is a stereo jack input and channel 7 and 8 is an RCA um, and Bluetooth, so whatever you prefer to use there. Um, it's got the RCA inputs, but it, it also controls the Bluetooth volume. Um, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to open a channel. I'm going to open channel one. I've got a microphone plugged into channel one and um, I'm going to speak into the microphone. I've got the column array set up directly behind this camera. It's not going to be the greatest audio, um, but at least when I change something, you can kind of hear it changing. So I've opened channel one. I've got a microphone. I'm going to speak through the microphone. I'm going to turn the level up. All right, so I'm speaking through a microphone now. There's no volume obviously because this level is down but as I turn this up you can hear my microphone come in all right that's my master level I'm actually going to take it down and see in this room here yeah, it's can't be too loud um, my fix my, my fix level is here as well for this channel and if I turn that up you'll hear it getting nice and wet also just excuse the feedback but you get the point if I had uh, a monitor, I would obviously send that to the monitor. If I was live, if I wanted to mute the channel, I can hit mute and obviously it turns it off. Um, and if I was running two systems, I could pan it. Um, if I go left, it's automatically set up to go uh, left if you're using just one. But if I go right, you can actually hear it disappears completely because I don't have a right speaker plugged in. Let's get that thing to center. All right, then um, on the left hand side here, you've got your EQ. Uh, this is what I normally do to my vocal mic. Um, I normally roll off some lows. I find that there's a bit of mud between four and 600. Um, I don't know why I ended up on 528. I guess uh, just kind of where the scroller landed. 
um, but you can change sort of the EQ there. And what happens is, here's the on or switch. I'm not sure if you're gonna hear this too clearly, but if I put it off, you can hear um, there's a lot more low end and it's, um, it might sound better on this camera, but when you're playing live, it's kind of, it um, muffles the sound of it. That just kind of tucks the lows in a little bit and makes it sound a bit better. Uh, yeah, in preamp, you've got a high pass filter. Um, you can push that right up there if you want to. You can actually hear all the lows pretty much going. I'm not afraid of a high pass filter. I think for vocals, to make them cut, you should leave it quite high. This is gain. Um, I can bring it down. Or if I push it up, it's probably going to feed now. But you can hear it getting louder. All right, let's keep that down there. For me, that seems to work fine. Um, this is a polarity switch. I've never had to use it, but if you click it in, it obviously switches the polarity. Um, and this is just a boost function if your mic has low gain. Um, I'm gonna hit it, it's gonna, you're gonna hear how it gets louder. All right, let me put that off before I make too much noise. Um, in dynamic, there, this is basically your, basically your compressor uh, setup, and these are all just presets. But the presets essentially is just different levels on this uh, scale over here. So, if I, for example, hit acoustic guitar, drops it down to seven, and if I hit, let's say, a heavy compressor, it brings it up to 26. But you can also just take it down to seven if you want to, or whatever number you want to, where you feel it works for you. Um, just for ease, I just put it on vocal and leave it there. I can also just turn it off. You can kind of hear that the voice gets slightly softer as well. So we leave that on. Um, and then lastly, on this page, uh, you can access your other channels. All right, so if I click on there, channel one, there's all my channels. Let's just say that I want to uh, sort out my dynamic across all the different instruments going in. I would click channel two. It's already set up as an acoustic guitar, but let's just say it was a vocal. I'd hit vocal and that's what would happen. Or let's just say I was working on EQ. I'm just on channel one. There's my vocal mark EQ. The next uh, EQ in line is my guitar, and I want to work on all the EQs at once. I hit two. There's my guitar EQ. Uh, with this system, I actually don't do anything to my guitar. Um, I find that it sounds perfect without doing anything. Um, but let's just say I went to channel three. I use a, a kick drum, an electronic kick drum, and it's already set up, but I just boost some lows um, and then cut some mids and some highs to make it sound good. So basically the system saves your last setting, um, the last thing that you did. I'm gonna move away from this mic. And um, essentially uh, what, what that means is, is uh, I don't have to change anything <laughs> because I'm using the system for myself. I have to tweak things here and there for my, uh, depending on the venue, but I'm Jumping a little bit ahead of myself, there is a basically a place where you can save different settings for different band setups um, and you can load from that page as well. That's all under system, but we're going to get there now. For now, I'm going back to the input page. Um, you can mute from here as well. And there's also... Um, well, you can see kind of where things are bouncing. If I talk into my microphone, there it is. You can see it. It's muted at the moment. I can unmute it if I want to, and then it comes through there again. All right. Um, enough with the microphone, though. If we move on to the outputs, um, this is my master level. I've set it at minus one. Um, but obviously, you can set it wherever you want to. This master boost function, it changes the EQ slightly um, and it seems to make things louder. Um, I'm happy on master boost. You can just kind of decide what's going to work best for you. Uh, that's all personal preference. This EQ live, if you engage it, it kind of tucks in the low end uh, of the system a little bit, which is cool um, because 
sometimes when you're indoors, the system can get a little bit boomy. I generally leave it off though. Swap left and right does exactly that. If you click it, it switches. Whatever you send in, whatever you've panned to the left will now go to the right and vice versa. It kind of tells the system that the right speaker is actually situated on the left. That's obviously a master mute. Um, if you go here on the left hand side, if you look here, there's a left right EQ. Um, hit flat. Uh, whatever you do to this EQ, you have to turn it on before you'll hear anything. I kind of just leave it flat. I haven't really had an issue with anything. Um, if there was a problem, it would probably be uh, somewhere on the low end here that you would have to have to cut a little bit. Um, but for me, I just kind of leave it off. Your auxiliary send. So you can either send uh, as like your. You can mix it like a monitor, or what you can do is you can send a, well, let me just show you. You can send the left, right signal. So what it, what's coming out of the mains, you can send it to an auxiliary send. Let's say you've got a delay speaker uh, far down and you wanna send, um, or you wanna use the aux out for that. You can use it there, you just set it to uh, left or right. If it is set to auxiliary, obviously you can mix it as a monitor send completely separate to what you're hearing out of the, main system um, and then obviously this would be the level and you can also EQ the monitor or the auxiliary send if you feel like you need to do that obviously just turn it on if you do that but we'll just leave that flat for now um, back to the home page so these three are microphone and jack inputs this is a microphone jack input as well or combos but this one has got some effects on it for um, a guitar. So what I'm gonna do is, I've got a guitar here, electric guitar, I'm going straight in. I'm gonna turn the volume up, let's just make sure we've got something here. Okay, so that's my guitar. I think there might already be an amp on here. But I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Okay, EQ's off, preamp, we'll put it there. Actually, we'll leave that off. Let's leave everything flat. Dynamic, everything's off, channel, okay, cool. Now if you open MFX, which I presume means multi-FX, um, I'm gonna turn the amp off. This is how my guitar sounds. It's quite soft, um, but I felt, what I, what I need to do is, so that that's the global setting, that means you're running an amp on, but there's no amp selected yet. So I'm gonna turn on an amp by hitting this button. All right, and if I wanna turn on some modulation, I can turn it on here. And if I wanna hit a delay, I can turn it on here as well. So I'm going to put those off now because what I want to do is I want to go through what's on the side here. So um, where it says set, this is basically like a home page and this is a shortcut to turn things on and off. All right, you have to have this on otherwise it doesn't matter what you do here, it's, it's not going to come through. So we turn it on, there it is. We'll leave those off for now. Let's open the amp um, and essentially this on switch is the same as the home page. So if it's off on the home page, it'll be off when I open amp. But if I turn it on on the home page, it'll be on inside the amp as well. And then there's a bunch of different amps with different sounds here as well. Um, and you can go through it. You can obviously set your treble, your mids, your bass, whatever you need to do to make your guitar sound good. Um, this is quite cool if you're playing with tracks and you don't want to take uh, pedals with you or a guitar amp. If you want to keep it super simple, I'm pretty sure you can find a decent sound by going through these amps and tweaking, um, you know, or tweaking those settings. Modulation, um, there's a chorus flanger and a tremolo. Let's put it on flanger, let's turn it on. Now let's 
sounds pretty cool. Um, and if we hit a tremolo, you can obviously change the depth of that. Let's make it nice and slow. And we make it nice and big. Oh shit. I've got it completely wrong. I meant to say I want the depth nice and high and nice and slow. Um, obviously you can just turn that off there if you don't like it. And then the last thing here is the delay. And I just want to just turn that off for the sake of hearing a clean delay. Um, it's off at the moment. It's got a tap tempo. This system actually has a foot switch. So if you want to tap it in with your foot, I, I think you can do that. Um, let's just turn it on so we can hear. Um, obviously you can turn the delay up loud if you want it. Um, and you can back off the feedback if you don't like so much. Again, I'm not so sure how well you can hear it through this camera. The column set up directly behind it. All right, but you get the gist of the amp. So that's on channel four. Every time I hit inputs, it takes me back to this home page. Um, that's channel four effects. I'll quickly go through this as well um, and what I think I need to do is I need to talk through this microphone again. Um, so I'm going to hit inputs, I'm going to go to my microphone and I'm going to unmute the microphone, there it's back on and now at the top I'm going to go back to effects and I've just got it on reverb please because oh, I think it sounds fine. Um, I'm not a massive fan of reverbs, um, but yeah, then this one seems to work fine. I just want to quickly, so I went back home, I'm going to open this channel and I'm going to send some effects. One, I'm going to make it quite wet so that we can hear the different reverbs. Um, so I can go back to the home page. I was in channel one. I just want to bring the volume down slightly because I can hear it sort of causing feedback here. I'm going to open effects. Alright, and I'll quickly, obviously if this is off, then there is no reverb, it's completely dry. I turn the reverb on, it's there. This is your master, this needs to be up as well, uh, wherever you, need, you feel it needs to be. Um, so yeah, we've got ambient, reverb, which is a lot shorter. All it does is basically uh, change the decay and the dampness of it. Um, hall ambience, for an example, slightly longer. What else have we got here? Large hall vocal. Uh, that's kind of what it is there. Um, let's see if there's anything else I can show you. Just some light reverb. That's actually my vibe, to be honest. I think there are some weird things. Live plate. There is a. There's almost too many reverbs. Vintage reverb. I'm just kind of going through this for the first time myself as well. <laughs> Strong. Um, sweet. Sweet, sweet, it's not really doing anything. Pulse, pulse, ah. Anyway, that's a little bit disappointing. I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong. One. Ah, oh, cool, that's a bit of a delay then. All right, maybe I was doing something wrong. But yeah, sorry, I don't want to spend too much time on this. But that's kind of how the effects work on the system. 
there's one more thing I need to show you and that is the system itself and over here this is where you can I'm moving away from the mic this is where you can either load your presets um, I've got preset one and I would hit load um, and that would take me to what I use all the time I would only need to do this though if I've changed settings from my sort of preferred uh, gig setup which I don't I generally don't do but let's just say I use the system for someone else um, and they've changed things around I would want to load my stuff in again otherwise when I turn the system on it's automatically going to what those guys did when they used the system I hope that makes sense um, save would be the same thing once you've got a really nice uh, sound you would hit I'm gonna go to four because I don't want to overwrite my stuff and you'd hit save and then save it to number four now if you go to load you go to number four and you load it will load what I saved um, anyway so there's save uh, this is your setup. You can sort of neutralize the whole disk if you want. If you want phantom power, you can put it on. I use a microphone with phantom power. Um, so obviously leave that on. And then this is your different... This is that foot switch I was telling you about. Um, so in mode. So you can either have a single or a dual foot switch. Uh, I don't have a foot switch, so I don't actually know what... This is about normal open close. That's, uh, I guess, polarity of your foot switch. Um, whether you want it to, to act when you stand on it or you want it to act when you release your foot from it. Um, and yeah, you can actually set up the function then. You can uh, use it as a mute switch to turn your effects on and off. If you've got a lot of verb and then when you speak to people or speak over the mic, you want to turn the verb off. You can kind of just set it to what you want it to do. Uh, ring function. I don't seem to have that option. Uh, but it looks like it would change the different settings of your multi effects, um, of your guitar amp simulation. So I guess if you're going to take a solo, you could uh, use your foot switch to turn it on. You know what? Put this on dual, it should open it. Yes. Okay, so if you. What sort of so you could turn your amp on and off, so you could, like I said, like you could use it as a boost your second pedal as a boost function if you want, um, or you could use it as a tap function, uh, or you can turn your delay on and off. Uh, I guess if you're going to use it for that, you'll figure it out. But that is the gist of the app. I'm going to do a short video on the Apple app as well, it's pretty much the same thing, but it's a different skin. Um, I hope this was helpful.